Hello, everybody. Good morning or afternoon. I think it just crossed 12. It is my privilege and honor to be here at CCF. I want to thank our friend Rebecca and her whole team uh, who actually invited me here to the Philippines. If it wasn't for them, uh, by God's grace, we wouldn't be here. Can we thank Rebecca and her team, please? Thank you so much. It is my privilege and honor to, to be able to communicate my story of how the Lord has transformed my life from a life without limbs into a life without limits, and I give all the glory to God. Anything good that you see in Nick, in Nick Vujicic is because of the grace and power of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? I... Um, I'm so blessed and humbled, and uh, I'm sure that you've heard the great news that me and my wife, we got married last year, and now we have a boy. He's three months old. We're really excited. And uh, the Lord has blessed our ministry of Life Without Limbs. You might want to take notes of these scriptures I'm going to be sharing with you, uh, this, this, this uh, uh, sermon. Um, there are times where you listen to a sermon and you think you received it, but then three days later, you forgot what scriptures the preacher was talking about. And you can always go back to these scriptures to help uplift you um, because we all have ups and downs. Amen? So you can always go back to these verses that I'm going to be sharing uh, with you uh, this time. I, uh, every time I get up and preach, even in the same church, um, I, uh, I find myself preaching different sort of messages. They're even coming from different verses as well. But the core message of my testimony is the same. And I want to encourage you in the times where God doesn't make sense and you don't understand His perfect plan for your life, what do you do? Before I get into it, I'm 30 years old. I was born in Australia. I started to be an evangelist at age 19, so 11 years ago. And by the grace of God, He's opened up doors for me to speak across 46 countries, meet eight presidents, and even speak to congresses. We have many, many testimonies of how people's lives have been changed on our website, and the videos of uh, our traveling are going to be constantly updating this year. I'm very, very, uh, you know, excited to be here in the Philippines, and um, uh, this is my first official tour in the Philippines and definitely not my last. I'm praying about coming back next year already. Um, we are so excited uh, to report that last, uh, yesterday uh, actually, um, I was able to have a press conference with the top three TV stations, top three newspapers that cover 80% of the Philippines. And we are so thankful to report to you that within a week or two, the preaching sermon tomorrow that's going to be held uh, in, I think it's in the Coliseum, I think, um, is going to be broadcasted nationwide to the Philippines. Hallelujah. So our ministry of Life Without Limbs is in which I go and share about my faith in Jesus. And uh, Lord willing, we're preaching across 27 nations this year. We just came from Japan, and uh, we're going to continue our journey. And you can follow us on Facebook as well, Nick Vujicic fans. Anyone on Facebook? Yeah, maybe two of you, three of you? Yeah? Um, it's so wonderful to be here, and I really pray that the Lord touches your heart. Um, I want to get into Scripture. I want to open up to Psalm 23. If you have your Bibles with you, uh, we would like you to follow along. And um, I want to share with you my story. I'd love to first open up with one of my favorite psalms that, that's my, my favorite anyway. Tell me when you're there. I, uh, I'm so thankful for my little foot that God's blessed me with. I love my little foot. I can do the peace sign. Peace, how you doing? <laughs> the Lord's blessed me with wonderful parents to instill my faith in God. I went to church every Sunday. My parents always said, do your best and God will do the rest. Amen? You know, it's so wonderful to have the joy of the Lord. Everybody say joy. joy. Say it again. Joy. You know, it's so beautiful. One of the verses in the Bible, it says, the joy of the Lord is my strength. 
What is the joy of the Lord? Is, is it limited by circumstance? No. I love it how, actually, we're going to get up on screen, Philippians. Before we read Psalms uh, 23, we're going to read Philippians 4. We're going to have it up on screen if they have it ready. Um, I want to talk about the joy of the Lord. I want to talk about the love of the Lord. Apostle Paul says, and to, to understand the first part of verse 11, you need to read verse 10, and then to understand verse 10, you may need to go back to verse 9. We don't have that time. But we're going to go from uh, verse 11, and it says, I want to read the same portion. Can you put up on this screen again, if you don't mind, so I can read exactly what it's, here we go. Apostle Paul says, I am not saying this because I am in need, for I have learned to be content whatever the circumstances. Let's just stop there. Look at those words. I am not saying this because I am in need. Everybody say need. need. Say need again. Need. All right. Now, the difference between us coming to God and asking Him for things, it, the difference is it's either because I want or because I need or because I think that that's what God wants. Are you with me? So Apostle Paul says, I am not saying this because I am in need, for I have learned in whatever circumstance I am to be content. Next verse. I know what it is to be in need. Does anyone here know what it is to be in need? Right. And I know what it is to have plenty. I know and I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation. Does that sound like all things are possible? Does that sound like a man of faith? Absolutely. Whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want, he is content. Then, the most famous verse maybe, verse 13, I can do all things through him or through Christ who gives me strength. Hallelujah. Amen. I was not content as a child. I can't say that as a child that I was a thankful child. There were times of ups and downs. You see my foot? Ups and downs, ups and downs. And there were times where I could be thankful for the things I had, but it's very tempting to be jealous. It's very tempting to see what everyone else has and then compare your life to theirs. And then the question is, especially when you are in need, did I want arms and legs? Yes, but it was very clear that I could categorize the desire for arms and legs as a need. I need arms and legs. I need to walk. I need to look after myself. I need, I, I needed help because I had no arms, no legs. I didn't have something that everyone else had. So it was a need. And to me in my life as a child, I thought, well, if I don't have what I need, then how am I going to be happy? How am I going to have joy if I don't have what I need. I want to ask you today, what are you waiting for? What have you been praying for? Maybe it's a circumstance to change. Did my circumstance change? No. What changed? My heart, my mind. Do I have peace? Yes. Do I have strength? Yes. Do I have my eternal purpose? Yes. What do you think I want? Arms and legs or purpose? Arms and legs or peace? Arms and legs or strength? Does arms and legs give you strength? Did you wake up this morning and say, wow, I know I'm going to have the best day of my life again because I have my arms and my legs. No. Arms and legs is not 
happiness. So what are you waiting for? Are you waiting for money? Are you waiting for a different season of life? Because I've met all people of all nationalities that I've met, five million people face-to-face -face I've spoken to across 46 countries like I told you. My book, Life Without Limits, is in 29 languages. In every culture that I've ever been to, I have seen people who are happy and people who are not happy. What's the difference? Is it because they have the money and the success and they have things? No. The greatest things in life are not things. I had a billionaire came up to me crying, desperately weeping, asking for help. I said, what's wrong? He said, it's my daughter. I said, what's wrong with your daughter? He said, my daughter has stopped eating because she was teased at school about how she looked. And she is now in hospital. She hasn't eaten properly for three months. She is in the intense care unit. Please help me, Nick. I have money, but I don't have my daughter. Help me get my daughter back. Money is money. Money, drugs, sex, alcohol, pornography, fame, fortune, any pleasure that you can see or touch or hold, it's all temporary. Some people say, well, if I can just get to university, then I won't be as stressed. Then I know I will be happy. I got to get out of this place called high school. It's stressing me out. I can't do this anymore. Then they get to university and they're like, oh my gosh, I'm so stressed. Now I need a job. I need to get the best grades that I can. And then when I get a job, then I'll be what? Happy. Then they get a job and they find out who they're working for. And they're like, oh my gosh. I worked all my life to work for this person. He's stressing me out. I work too hard. I don't get paid enough. When does the stress end? Where is that point of happiness? Well, for me, I had the wall in my mind between the truth and the lies. Everybody say the truth. What does the truth do? It sets you and who the Son, Jesus Christ, sets free, is free indeed. Free. Can you see a limbless man? Yes. Is he free? Hello. Can you see my smile? Does that mean that I never cry? No. I still go through ups and downs. But even in a valley, I can always preach the Word because the Word is true. It never changes. God's promises in this book is for you. Some of you today don't have a relationship with Jesus because you believe that the pain that you are given in your life is actually God's fault. Well, don't die because of a lack of knowledge. It's very clear where pain, sickness, disease, and death comes from, and it's not from God. It is from who? The devil. Who is the devil? He wants you dead. Satan wants you in hell. God wants you in heaven to live forever, just like he did with Adam and Eve but he gave us all free choice, free will. So he, here is the book, the Bible. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Encouragement takes me closer to all that God wants me to be. I have my family and I have my friends who pray for me, who encourage me and I have God's angels around me. Amen? But what discourages me are other people 
circumstances and the wall that's in the supernatural. Some people think that having no arms, no legs is a very, very hard life. No, I did not have a very, very hard life when you compare my suffering to some other people. I actually believe that being in a home where your mom and dad constantly fight, that is worse than having no arms and no legs. Burying a loved one is worse than having no arms and no legs. Brokenness is brokenness. But don't let your brokenness define your future. Amen? Don't let your circumstance define your joy. If the joy of the Lord is your strength, what does that mean when you have circumstances that you cannot change and you pray to God that He changes it, but He chooses not to? Does God heal every cancer? No. Is it because of their faith? No. Is it because of how much money they didn't give? No. Is it because they didn't pray enough? No. I might die of cancer. If I don't die of cancer, I will die of old age. If I don't die of old age, I'll die in a car crash. If I don't die in a car crash, I'll die in a plane crash. I will somehow one day die. Great. So if God answers every single one of my prayers, then I probably would never die because I would never want to die. No one likes dying. No one likes death. But if heaven is waiting for me, the <coughs> excuse me, the place where there is no death, no sickness, no disease, no evil, no war, no limitation, there is nothing but pure holiness, love, peace, heaven. Well, I'm going there. I don't know about you, but this earth, it's going to dissolve away. There will be one day that we will all go home. If He comes in our lifetime, if He comes, is it possible? Yes. Do you know what the Bible says? When God gives all of humanity that is alive a chance to say yes to God, to hear about Jesus. That is when Jesus, the King of kings and Lord of lords, will come down through the clouds and we will go home. If He doesn't come in my lifetime, who cares? I'm 30 today. If I die at 90, Heaven for me is 60 years away. Hallelujah. This is as close to hell as I will ever be. Thank you, Jesus. But you must understand that when you come to the Lord Jesus Christ, it's not just a prayer and it's not just coming to church and it's not just being a good person. It's having an interactive personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. An encounter and a conviction where you say, God, I am a sinner. Forgive me of my sin. I believe that Jesus died on the cross for my sin. I believe that Jesus rose himself from the dead. Fill me with your Holy Spirit and give me a passion and hunger for your name. I want to live my life according to your plan. Not my plan. Your best. Not my best. Your strength. Not my strength. Does that make sense? When you have that interaction and you 
strive and hunger for the Lord, and you allow God to encourage your soul as you read the promises of God. Sometimes we only open up our Bibles on Sunday. Why? Because we are too what? Busy. B-U-S-Y. Being under Satan's yoke. Don't be too busy for God. Hallelujah. Don't even be too busy doing ministry where you put your ministry above the priority of your family. Your greatest ministry, men, is your wife. And your ministry is not just to be a provider. Some of you are worried about your family. Well, I'll tell you right now, you need to understand, men, that your wives don't need an excellent provider. Your wives need an excellent godly man and husband who trusts in the provider. Amen? Your wife doesn't need a man who can hold her hand. Your wife needs a godly man who holds her heart. My son doesn't need an excellent college. My son does not need an excellent paying job. My son needs an excellent example of a father. And until I know the father, how am I going to best be a father if I don't know the heavenly father who forgives, who loves, who's patient, who's gracious, who's kind, who's gentle? Amen? So we need to understand that it's not a certain place of success or things where we become happy. It's being set free by the truth. Hallelujah. When someone says, oh, look at this boy with no arms and no legs. I was teased and bullied at school. Oh, look at him. He is ugly. Well, is that from the Lord Jesus Christ? Is that from God? How do you know that's not from God? If you don't know what God says, how do you know the difference between a lie and a truth? Some of you teenagers come to church, but you're playing church and you are not a new transformed creation. Some of you within the youth group are teasing each other and gossiping about each other. That is not a transformed new creation believer. If you tease someone, you are teasing God's child. How can you do that when you understand the truth of their value is not determined on how they look, on how popular they are, or how smart they are? They are valued because they are a son or a daughter of the king. Girls, when you are a daughter of the king, you are a princess. If you don't know the truth of your value, you will die with the lie of conforming to what the world says is beautiful. I am wonderfully and fearfully made. I am anointed to preach the gospel. God has given me the ability in His hands by the power of His Holy Spirit to break open the doors of the captive and bring liberty and justice in this world. I am an ambassador of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. I have an army of angels around me wherever I go and death itself will not hold me down. Death itself will not scare me. Even to the point where I got a death threat in, Mal in uh, Indonesia. Too many people who were Islam converted into Christianity the week that we were there. We were on TV. Someone said, if Nick comes back to the city and converts any more Muslim people into Christianity, we will kill him. So I got an invitation to go back and I prayed about it and I felt the Lord to go back. 
I went back to the same city. And guess what happened? We did an altar call in that city. Many, 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 many came forward. Hundreds. I think a couple thousand came that night. 2,000 people out of 20,000 people. Hallelujah. And guess what happened? The guy who gave me the death threat gave his life to the Lord Jesus Christ. And now him and his entire family are serving in that church still to this day. Glory be to God. And yes, I've been in a hotel where some terrorists in 2008 were planting bombs in my hotel. We left before the bombs went off. We missed it by 24 hours. 120 foreigners were killed. I don't care how I die, I'm gonna die. I'm not looking forward to living billions of years here on this earth where there are one billion people going hungry, 10 million slaves. I don't like what I see in this world. I can't wait for home. I can't wait for that devil to be locked up forever, hallelujah. And he doesn't want you to have happiness. When your parents are fighting, you know what you think? You think that you just need to determine who's right and who's wrong, and we fix up the problem and move on. It's not about who's right and who's wrong. It's about who's going to pray for your family. Because there are demons and angels fighting for your soul, just like they were fighting for mine. I was believing lie after lie after lie. Nick, you're not good enough. Nick, God doesn't love you. Nick, God's never going to give you a plan. You're not going to get married. You're not going to get a job. You're not going to be a father. You can't even pick up your kids when they're crying. You're going to be a burden to your parents. At age 10, I felt like there was no hope. Why? Because I was focusing on the lies. What are you focusing on? A false happiness? Because if you're not content in the Lord Jesus Christ and who he is and what he's done for you, you do not know my Lord and Savior. If you're not happy with the Lord Jesus Christ single, you ain't going to be happy with the Lord Jesus Christ married. Just ask any married person. Many people, they're waiting on a different season of life before they're happy. No, Hope begins with Jesus. Amen? So at age 10, in 15 centimeters of water, I tried to drown myself, and the first two times I was trying to work out how much air I hold in my lungs before I let it out and then let the water come in. And the third time I rolled over, I was stopped by one thought. And the thought was seeing my mom and my dad and my brother crying at my grave. And because my parents did nothing but love me, I loved them. And I realized the pain I would leave behind. So I decided to stay by the grace of God. Do you think that anyone knew that a limbless man would be the hands and feet of God traveling around the world, speaking 2,000 times across 46 countries, eight presidents, and seeing a half a million souls come to heaven? If God can use a man without arms and legs, then he can certainly use you. God can use you. If you are willing, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not upon your own understanding. Acknowledge Him in all your ways, and He will direct your paths. Proverbs 3, verse 5 and 6. Romans 8, 28. All things come together for the good for those who love Him, who have been called according to His purposes. Isaiah 40, verse 31. Those who wait upon the Lord will renew their strength. They shall mount up on wings like eagles. I don't need arms and legs. I'm flying on the wings of the Holy Spirit, and I don't care what the world thinks. Hallelujah. God is good. 
When you have a good plan, you know Jeremiah 29 verse 11? Remember? For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you, not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. Well, as a kid, I prayed for arms and legs. Why? Because I thought I knew what God's plan was. Then you say, so God, can you give me arms and legs? Then he says, nothing. And I said, God, if you give me arms and legs, I'll go around the world and preach the gospel. Can you imagine if God actually gave me arms and legs when I was age eight? I'll tell you right now, no one would have believed the miracle. No one really would have been changed apart from the people who directly knew me. I'd maybe go on Australian TV for one day, and that's it. Brothers and sisters, I stand in front of you as a miracle of God that the world can't argue with. I am one example of the joy being my strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength, not what God gives me. The joy of knowing Him, the joy of interacting with Him, the joy of knowing His promises, the joy of knowing that He will even carry me when I cannot walk, the joy of knowing that He sees my tears, and my tears are a language that He understands, not my parents. Not even my wife knows exactly how I feel. I don't know exactly how my wife feels. We are together. And we talked and talked and talked about our life, but I still don't understand some of the things she's gone through. But God does. And God reached down from heaven, and she stretched her arm up. Some people don't even see the hand of God reaching down. Oh, he's not real. Why? Because he doesn't fit in your plan. He didn't fit in mine. And I said, God, I'm not going to believe in you. If you want me to believe in you, tell me, why was I born this way? He answered me. When I was 15, I read John chapter 9. A man was born blind. No one knew why. They said, Jesus why was this man born blind? You know what Jesus said? He didn't say, I don't know. Just like my doctors and my parents and everybody, we don't know. Jesus said, I know. It was done so that the works of God would be displayed in his life. Can you imagine the blind man he can't see Jesus. And he hears Jesus spit on the dirt. And then Jesus, without warning, puts that mud on this man's eyes. Can you imagine if you're the blind man? You'd be like, who are you? What are, what are you doing? He didn't say anything. He was still. I love that verse. Be still and know that I am God. He didn't say, tell me what you're going to do before I can really trust you. How many of you have Jesus in your heart, but only as a guest in your house? Not the owner of your house. Not the first priority, principle, person you go to and and, and align your life up against with every decision that you make, honoring Him in your life. You sort of have Him as an accessory. You sort of have Him as an iPhone app. And you call upon the name of the Lord only when you need Him. That's not a friendship. He wants you. He wants your life. If you hold on to your life, you will lose your life. If you hold on to your strength and your wisdom and you don't surrender your entire life to the Lord Jesus Christ, you will lose your life because no one raised himself from the dead like Jesus Christ and no one was holy like Jesus and no one said there were God like Jesus. And if you want Jesus to raise you from the dead, you must allow Him to take over your life.
Nick Vujicic is Nick Vujicic, but I'm not living for Nick Vujicic anymore. I'm living for the kingdom purposes. I'm living according not to the flesh desires, but according to God's desires. And one day at a time, I am under construction. Philippians 1.6, being confident of this, he who began a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. That means that every day, as long as I have breath, I am not perfect and I need him. I would rather be a dying orphan who knows they need Jesus than a billionaire who does not feel that they need him. Hallelujah. 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 So I gave my life to Jesus Christ at 15. I became an evangelist at 19. Five years later, I met someone who I'd never forget. I was speaking in front of a church, and this man held up his son. No arms. No legs, exactly like me, little left foot. I got the father to bring him up on stage, 19 months old, and he's this high, and he's looking up at me, and I'm looking down at him, and when I looked at him, I saw me. I saw that he's going to be teased, he's going to feel alone. He's going to wonder if God really loves him. And I had a flashback to when I was a child. And I used to wish that I had met someone else like me. If I only met one person like me who's older than me, that would have given me hope. If someone else was like me, then they knew my pain. And if they're smiling, then there is hope that one day I will smile too. Well, I didn't get that miracle. When you don't get a miracle, you can still be a miracle for someone else in the hands of the Lord. I told his mom that when he's six years old, that I'll go to his school. Well, last year he turned six and I went to his school and he was being teased by everyone. I went to his school and I spoke about love and bullying and purpose and value. No one's teasing him today. He is the coolest kid in the school. Some people ask me, so Nick, if you had a choice, no arms and no legs, and with arms and legs, what would you choose? This. Why? Because one day in heaven, I will have arms and legs. That's not all. One day in heaven, I will hear my name. Hey, Nick! And I'll turn and I'll see Daniel running to me with his new arms and his new legs. And he will come up and hug me and say, thank you so much for letting me know that Jesus loved me. Thank you for letting me know that heaven is real. Arms and legs, pfft. it's going to give you arthritis later on. You just watch. <laughs> Hallelujah. I might get arthritis in my little foot. So do you know where I'm talking about today? Did you get the message? Okay, Psalm 23. I'm going to read the whole psalm. It says this, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. 
He restores my soul. What on earth restores your soul? Nothing. Hallelujah. Nothing but Jesus. He leads me in paths of righteousness for His name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will not fear any evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. What? You prepare a table of celebration, a table of fellowship, a table of rest, a table of the presence of God. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. What's he saying? Relax. Be with me. I'll handle your enemies. Pray for your enemies. Hallelujah. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. I love this. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Is the Lord your shepherd? Is He the owner of your life, your master? Is He your master? Because if he is not your master, something else is your master. You, you are your own master. Just like Adam and Eve. So will we choose to make the King of kings and Lord of lords our master? Or not believe? Teenagers, you think you have time. There is no time. Tomorrow is not promised for anyone. Oh, but Nick, I don't want to be a Christian yet. I want to do some stuff. I don't want to be a Christian yet because there's too many limitations. What? You want to share your virginity with someone before you get married and you know it's against the law of God? You think that it's restrictive to follow the law of God and you think that you are living in freedom? I don't think so. The rules and regulations and the law of God is there for you for your blessing. I was a virgin until I met my wife and I can look my son in the eye and say, I waited for your mother. That is beyond words a great example of true love in waiting by faith that my woman of God is on the way. And if I look at someone and she is not the one that God ordains for me, so let it be, God's best will come if I wait. Some girls are with emotionally controlling abusive boyfriends And they're afraid to let them go because, well, if they're not my boyfriend, then who's going to love me? I'm never going to get a better person than my boyfriend right now. Well, guess what? If you never give God a chance, that's exactly who you'll end up with. And you might have shared your virginity with someone who you'll never meet again in your life. And you feel something's missing when you share that part of you. 
God created you. God designed sex for marriage. And what was good, the enemy tried to twist it and bring in evil. I'll tell you right now, sex out of marriage is never better than within a marriage. Period. How can the devil's wine be better than God's wine? His counterfeit is never better than the authentic. God will honor you when you honor him in serving and living the way he has ordained. Repent of your sin. He will forgive you of your sin. You are not any more free than me to think that you're living your life the way you want. No, some of us get into addictions and you think you're strong, you can't stop your own thoughts and addictions. You need Jesus. You need a renewing of your mind to become a new creation that's under construction until the day of the law. Today, do you know him? Is he your king, your Lord, your everything? Because if not, I want to give you an opportunity to start a relationship with him. It's more than going to church. It's more than being a good person. And it's more than giving. It's about living the new life God has for you. Hallelujah. So from the front to the back, to the second and the third levels. If you know that you can confess today that you are a sinner, that you need forgiveness of your sins, you don't want to sin anymore. You want to run after God's will for you. And you realize you do not have an active, praying, reading, seeking, God-honoring life and relationship. And if you want to begin that relationship now, it starts with a prayer. And I want to pray that prayer with you. So right now, all across this place, if you know you need to make your life right with the Lord Jesus Christ, I want you to stand and be counted in this prayer right now. Stand. <laughs> Sit down for a second. There were a lot of people. I want to make sure that you understand why you're standing. You will stand because you do not have right now an active, God-honoring relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And you want to turn away from your sin and your life, and you're done playing around and you want God in your life to come and change you and give you his plan and his future for your life. If that's you, stand again. Wow. As we are, Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you and we thank you for your love. We thank you for your kindness. Thank you, God, for your Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord, that you've spoken to many hearts. Lord, we pray for faith. We pray, Lord God, that you would do miraculous things in this place. 
The greatest miracle of all is knowing you. And we thank you that all of heaven is now watching and rejoicing with us. Hallelujah. We give you praise. We give you honor. We worship you. You are the most high God. There is no name above the name of Jesus. And it's that name that we proclaim as King of Kings. Lord, we pray for every prayer request represented in this auditorium. We pray, Lord God, for the blind to see, the deaf to hear, the lame to walk, the skin diseases to fall off bodies, crooked backs to come straight, migraines and pain in the backs and the legs and the arms be gone in Jesus' name. We pray, Lord God, for the sick people we know who couldn't make it to church today. Father, send angels and legions of angels to our homes. We pray for miracles. We pray against every power and principality of darkness that be against us. Be free and healed in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, that the greatest miracle of all is knowing you. Hallelujah. Father, we pray for our homes and our families and our friends. We pray for full salvation. We pray, Lord God, you give us the courage to go out and serve and to invite people to church to know you as Lord. We pray, Lord God, you give us wisdom in every day of our life, comfort and protection. And we give you all the glory. Hallelujah. If you're standing, would you say this prayer with me out loud? Say, dear God, I come to you today and I thank you for loving me. Thank you for dying on the cross for all of my sins. Thank you, Jesus, for showing me that you are God and that you did raise yourself from the dead. I confess that I am a sinner and I know I will never be perfect. But today, I turn away from my life, my, my lifestyle. I turn away from my sin. I do not want to sin anymore. And I ask for forgiveness of all the things I've done. Please forgive me. Change me. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. I want to know you. Teach me to pray. Teach me a word. And draw me near to you. I want to know you more. Every single day, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We serve a great God who specializes in the impossible. Let's glorify Him. Through you, I can do anything. I can do all things Cause it's you who gives me strength Nothing is impossible Through you, blind eyes are open Strongholds are broken I am living by faith Nothing is impossible Nothing is impossible 
strength. 